It was an unfortunate end to the Bulls' summer league run where they closed the schedule going 4-1 in a win over the Sixers, and I say unfortunate as I'm sure most of you probably saw by now that the Bulls' first round draft pick in Daylon Terry suffered a non-contact hamstring injury, took him out of the game, and he of course did not return. At the time of this recording, we still do not have an official update or diagnosis as to what kind of injury he suffered. However, the good news is that if in fact it was a hamstring injury, which is what has been reported thus far anyway, that is better news than a potential knee injury that is sustained without contact. The play was pretty mundane too. He was receiving a pass from Justin Lewis on the perimeter. It looked like he was about to make a drive inside, but then winced in his motion forward and lost the ball temporarily. It really did look like a knee injury. That's why I was really concerned when I saw it live. I mean, anyone who has been a Bulls fan for some time now has had their share of traumatizing non-contact knee injuries. So we'll have to wait and see on more details regarding this apparent hamstring injury. Hopefully it's nothing serious and Terry will be ready to go by training camp. At least he has a solid three months before the season actually begins, if in fact the injury would otherwise require him to miss some time. But anyway, in today's video, we'll be recapping the Bulls Summer League, some key takeaways, highlights, and lowlights. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe as I will be covering the Bulls all season and off season long. I've set a goal for myself to reach 30,000 subscribers by the start of the season. So let's make it happen. But anyway, let's talk about the Bulls Summer League. I said this in a prior post-game video that it's kind of hard for me to get in the summer league. I do watch the games, but I'm not watching them as closely as I would the regular season, obviously. And I'm even less interested when the Bulls aren't a tanking team and they don't have top lottery picks to be following in the summer league. That being said, though, aside from that embarrassing loss to the Knicks where they got blown out by like 40 plus points, this was actually an entertaining summer league to watch the Bulls. There were a lot of things that I liked and some things that I didn't like, which I'll discuss. But seeing some of the Bulls' young up-and-coming talent show showcasing themselves and what they can do and to see some of them get ready to play on this Bulls team next season has got me excited. Now, there were really only a handful of players that I'm going to be focusing on for this video uh, because although it was a big roster, there were some exciting players to watch, but at the end of the day, there is only going to be three or four players max that will actually see time in a Bulls uniform for this upcoming season. Dalen Terry is obviously one of them. He's really the only surefire player that we'll see on the Bulls this season. Uh, Marco Simonovic is another. He's actually already on the Bulls roster under contract not even on a two-way contract, but we'll see if he actually gets any meaningful minutes this upcoming year. And then the other two, Justin Lewis, the Bulls' undrafted pickup that they signed to a two-way contract, and Malcolm Hill, who was on a two-way deal last season, and I would suspect he'll get another two-way deal this season as well. Uh, I liked what I saw from guys like Carlick Jones. I believe he started every game as the Bulls' point guard and was actually a very impactful player in his time on the court. Thornwell looked nice in some games. I love seeing the big man makers shoot it from outside, but at the end of the day, we know these guys aren't getting contracts. Not with the Bulls anyway, maybe with another NBA team. The Bulls are already at 15 roster spots as it is, which includes Zaylin Terry and Marco Simonovic, and I believe you're only allowed two two-way contracts, which the Bulls have have already given one to Justin Lewis. And like I said, I believe Malcolm Hill will likely be the other. Some of these guys you could end up seeing on the Windy City Bulls, but that's likely it. So again, for the purposes of this video, I'll mainly be just talking about those four guys that I just mentioned um, and that we could be seeing at some point in time on the Bulls roster in the regular season. And I'm going to start with the most obvious, the best player for the Bulls from the summer league, uh, their rookie in Dalen Terry. Now, Terry had sort of an up and down summer league, obviously injuring himself at the end of it didn't help, but he started off his first two games looking very confident, uh, but at times maybe a little too confident. Committed a lot of turnovers, had trouble finishing at the rim, missing a lot of shots, but but what I love was that he made up for it with his defensive intensity. Dude is a hustler on the defensive end and also knows where he needs to be at all times, whether defending on the ball or off. He fights through screens, reads screens quickly. Despite his slender frame, he's actually very physical and won't let his man bully him to the basket. He's got that long wingspan, which helps him picking the pocket of his man on offense and leading to a transition play. The kid has a lot going for him. Like, yes, he's pretty raw offensively. He's definitely still a project player, that's pretty obvious. Like, I don't expect Daylin to be coming off the bench and acting as an immediate impact for the Bulls in at least the first week of the season. It's going to take him some time to develop into his own player in the NBA, find his role, and hone in on his craft for what the Bulls need him to be. That's the other thing, too, is that a lot of Bulls fans were harping on Terry in his first few games for being a bad offensive player, committing a lot of turnovers, dishing out some bad passes. Like, you also have to remember, his role on this summer league team is going to be completely different 
than what it will be when he's with the Bulls this season. The Summer League is designed for these first round pick rookies to give them a role where they do a little bit of everything, gain that experience, see where they're good at, see what they need to work on, and above all, make mistakes and learn from them. You think Terry is going to be given the green light in the regular season like he had in the Summer League? No. So I'm not for that narrative that Daylon Terry is going to be one of these poor decision makers in the NBA when in reality his role will be nothing like we saw in Vegas. Terry's role, that's even if he's in the rotation, which I'll be honest, I'm not even sure if he will be at least to start the season anyway, uh, when you consider all the veteran players that the Bulls have. But Terry's role will be more of that defensive energizer, a guy that can maybe be acting as a 3 and D guy, although I know a lot of Bulls fans are hoping for that, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to be counted on as a three-point shooter for at least a year or two. Still has a lot of work to do on his shot, especially the NBA 3 compared to what he was used to in college. But he's going to be that guy that can impact the floor on defense, get you some stops, and like I said, above all, bring some energy to this crew. A dog on the court that will fight on every play, be screaming and cheering the team whether he's on the court or on the sideline. That's going to be what the Bulls need from him in this rookie season. Down the line, sure, Hope he turns into one of the better two-way players in the league, but that's not what he's going to be in his rookie season. Uh, the next guy I want to talk about is Marco Simonovic. Now, Simonovic had kind of a weird summer league. He started out having a game where he looked like he might even be a favorite to win the summer league MVP, to then following that up with a one-point performance against the Knicks where he went against an actual NBA player in Jericho Sims. The rest of Marco's time in Vegas was okay, and then he ended it with a solid performance in his final game in which he scored 26 points on 11 for 15 shooting to go along with eight rebounds. I don't know what Simonovic, because every time I think, hey, this guy is turning the corner and he might actually crack the Bulls rotation and get some non-garbage time minutes, he then shows us that he's just not there yet to be competing at the NBA level. Not saying that he can't eventually get there because he's only 22 years old. He definitely has progressed. There's no denying that. He was significantly better than what we saw from him last summer league. And I would even say he's shown some improvement even just from his time with the Bulls in the G League last year, mainly because of his physicality and the muscle that he has put on. But he's also become a smarter player. He's improved his screen and roll game a bit. Uh, his shot looks a little better, but that really still needs to be worked on. But my biggest issue with Simonovic is how is he actually going to show up against NBA big men? He does well when he's going against inferior centers like centers from the Summer League who haven't spent time in the NBA, but then when he goes up against the top level talent of guys who are barely even able to crack the rotation on their respective teams in the NBA, he crumbles, which doesn't instill a lot of confidence for giving him minutes in an NBA game. The other reason I see it being a taller order for him to crack the rotation is He's got to beat out Vucevic and Drummond, and obviously that's not going to happen. I would even argue it's going to be hard for him to get minutes over Tony Bradley. Uh, then we've got Justin Lewis, and I really, really like this kid. Had no idea who he was until the Bulls picked him up because I really don't watch college basketball at all and really only follow the top-level recruits, but this could prove to be a big undrafted signing by the Bulls. He may not get many minutes for the Bulls this upcoming season, but if he continues to work on his game, particularly on offense, he could have a good future as a rotational player in the league. What I like seeing from Lewis was his ability to read plays coming inside and just being one step ahead of his man to help protect the rim. Like, he had some nice blocks in the summer league. And a lot of it was because of his quick thinking and great lateral footwork in the paint. That's not a skill that is easy to pick up. To be honest, with the way the Bulls are still in some need of front court depth, more specifically at the four, I kind of hope there is a way in which the Bulls could somehow wave and stretch Tony Bradley and pick up Lewis on a fully guaranteed contract to give them more size of the four. And he can also help space the floor as he's capable of shooting it from outside. So I really liked what I saw from Justin Lewis. I'm curious to see where his future is going to go. And then finally, Malcolm Hill. Malcolm Hill was one of these players I actually was really pulling for on the Bulls team last season just because... The guy wasn't particularly skilled, but he worked hard. It didn't matter who he was going up against. He had to face Giannis and took that challenge head on and actually held his own. I believe the game that he mainly had to guard Giannis uh, was that infamous game where Grayson Allen took out Alex Caruso. I mean, the dude is a hustler, has great work ethic. And even though I think most would agree that Dalen Terry was the Bulls' summer league best player talent-wise, Malcolm Hill might have been their best player in terms of his impact on the court. In last night's game against the Sixers, he put up 23 points in 28 minutes on 7 for 11 shooting, 4 for 6 from 3, was getting to the line but also playing solid defense and only had one turnover. So I liked what I saw from Hill. Again, I think he'll be the one that picks up that second two-way contract with Justin Lewis for the Bulls. All in all, a fun summer league. 
It's still summer league though, you have to add that qualifier. Like a ton of these players are not professional basketball players, but are striving to be one. So you really can't compare the competition to what the NBA is. And that especially applies to whatever analysis or conclusions you draw from watching certain players in the summer league should always be taken with a grain of salt, knowing that things are gonna be drastically different once these players step on to an NBA stage. But I would love to hear what some of your guys' takeaways were from the Bulls Summer League. Let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.